Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Pierre Thomas. I'm originally from Belgium, um, but I grew up in Africa, um, more precisely in the former Belgian African colony known as uh, the Congo, uh, later known as uh, Zaire, and I grew up in the capital city of Kinshasa. I've been working with Noble Caledonia since about uh, 10 years on board of uh, the company's small expedition cruise ships. And lately, also have been in charge of leading uh, the groups to more particularly Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, and uh, as well Malawi, we're planning to do in the coming years. The group's um, tour, his uh, name is called Ultimate Uganda. As you can see on this map of Africa, Uganda is located uh, a little bit to the east, so it's not entirely Central Africa, it's considered to be Eastern Africa, and the country is uh, surrounded uh, by several important uh, bodies of water. To the southeast, we have one of the largest lakes uh, in the world, known as Lake Victoria. Uh, in the west, we have Lake Edward, we have Lake Albert, and the country, as you can see, is as well surrounded by some important African neighbors. In the south, we have uh, the country of Rwanda and we have Tanzania. Then we have, uh, to the east, we have Kenya. To the north, we have the relatively new country of South Sudan. And to the west, we have the DRC or the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, also, an important mountain range is found in the west of the country, known as the Ruwenzori mountain range and in the past also known as the mythical mountains of the moon. Those are snow-capped mountains with peaks over 5,000 meters. So this gives you a little idea of what we're going to experience um, in the two weeks we're going to spend in the Pearl of Africa. Uh, we have about uh, an eight-hour flight. Uh, we first fly from London to, to Brussels in Belgium, and from there the flight will continue um, to the city of Entebbe. Uh, from Entebbe we'll have a, a drive uh, to Kampala where we'll spend two nights. Kampala is the capital city of Uganda. And over the next days, we will have um, an in-depth exploration of uh, Uganda. And that means that as the country is surrounded by important bodies of water, mountain ranges, savanna, this is a true bird watcher's paradise with about a thousand species of birds. So this is one of the top destinations uh, for bird watchers in Africa. So from Kampala, we're going to leave uh, and spend about 12 days uh, uh, traveling across the country. We'll pass by an interesting breeding program for uh, southern right rhinos called the Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary. We'll be co continuing to, to one of the country's largest national parks, known as Murchison Falls National Park. Then we'll be heading down to uh, the primate capital of the world, known as the Kibale Forest National Park. We'll be getting afterwards further south to Queen Elizabeth National Park. And one of the highlights, of course, will be to look forward to be doing our um, fantastic uh, gorilla tracking in the Bwindi Impenetrable Forest or the Bwindi National Park. On the way back to Entebbe, we'll have a, another night uh, stop and we'll be spending a visit in the small but beautiful uh, Lake Mburo National Park. This is the kind of transportation we'll be using uh, over the next days. So you can see very large windows, a pop-up roof with those extended land cruisers. And uh, what is important to make the, the traveling across the, the roads of Uganda more comfortable for you, we also hire um, a luggage van. Uh, so all luggage is non-stop with us, follows us along the way from lodge to lodge. So in case you need, you have access to your luggage, uh, the luggage van will be at all times with us. So this is the kind of transportation, very comfortable transportation we're going to use for the exploration of Uganda. 
a visit to Uganda wouldn't be complete without uh, an, an overview of the city, um, chaotic markets, um, traffic jams. This is uh, a, a fantastic experience for many. Uh, this is something not to be missed, but everyone after one full day in Kampala, where we have a comprehensive city tour, we also visit uh, an important project uh, that is funded by the Noble Caledonia Charitable Trust. We'll be spending some time there uh, seeing what they're doing. But it is interesting to, to have an idea what the city looks like. This is a picture I took on the way to the Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary. Um, and you can see those are bananas. This is the typical uh, staple food for many Ugandans. Uh, this is the way those bananas are transported uh, from the banana plantations to the markets. And this particularly is known as the matoke. This is a banana that is cooked before it can be eaten. On the way, we definitely will have some stops at uh, the local markets, which is great, is that you very rarely see any, any uh, foreigner. So we will uh, try to get some of those delicious and sweet and juicy pineapples and we'll let everyone try those. Um, it is a three and a half hour drive, a comfortable road from Kampala to the Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary, which has been very successful. Uh, all the details about the breeding program of the Southern Right uh, Rhino will be provided locally, of course. This is a, a protected area, about um, 7,000 hectares or 70 square kilometers, where we nowadays have about uh, 22 uh, rhinos that are kept uh, in semi-captivity but where we will have a chance to walk uh, through a, a savanna like environment with the hope and uh, we always have been successful uh, spotting them is to have a close encounter with the southern white rhino used to be uh, found in the wild in uganda uh, but now they are uh, starting a breeding program with the hope of putting them back in the future in uh, the largest national parks. So we have to cross our fingers. We've always been successful in spotting them. So this for me definitely is one of the highlights of our tour is to have a relatively close contact during a bushwalk. Of course, we're always accompanied by armed rangers uh, for our safety and protection, which is important. So we just have about a couple of hours at the Rhino Sanctuary, and then our trip will continue for another three and a half hours to one of Uganda's largest national parks, which is the Murchison Falls uh, National Park, a fantastic area. And this is why we've decided to spend three nights at Murchison Falls National Park because it is the most diverse one. And after spending a relaxing night um, in one uh, of the lodges around uh, the River Nile, the next morning we will use this interesting transportation to cross the River Nile and to finally get to do our game drives in um, the northern section of uh, the Murchison Falls National Park. This is one of the places on our trip where, if we're lucky, we'll get to see a good amount of the Rothschild's giraffe. This uh, group of giraffes is known as a tower. This is a tower of Rothschild's giraffes. And I particularly like this shot, not the close-up, but I like the one to the left. You can see there's a picture I took and uh, not knowing there was a, a, a giraffe in the distance actually just walking in exactly the same position. So this is not photoshopped. Uh, this is a picture I took by chance and the, the result is quite, quite great. Uh, along, this, uh, along this national park, uh, there's quite a lot of bodies of waters and uh, we will of course get to see uh, one of the largest uh, mammals in Africa. This is the hippo. And during the boat ride, uh, we plan to do, uh, we have two fantastic boat rides in this national park. One is going upstream uh, to the falls that gave the name uh, to the national park. So those are the Murchison Falls. And along this boat ride, we often get encounters with 
uh, the largest uh, land mammal on the planet, which is the African elephant. And of course, during this boat trip, we often get a close look and this group of elephants you can, you would call, yes, a parade of, uh, of elephants. And the highlights of, the, of this boat trip will actually be uh, to reach the Murchison Falls. And for whoever would like to, we have the opportunity to walk all the way up to the top of the falls. Whoever would not like to do this walk, there's no problem. The boat we have been on can drop you off at the end of the boat ride, they can drop you off at the lodge on the way back. We can walk up and then the vehicles will be at the top of the, the falls to pick us up and bring us back to the lodge. We have two complete days in Murchison Falls National Park. And as you can see, this is a picture of the roof popped up. And just to the left of the car is a Jackson's uh, heart beast. And this is a, an animal we definitely will be looking for uh, during our visit to Murchison Falls National Park. One of the more common uh, animals we will be spotting is the Ugandan cob that you can see uh, right here. And during our second boat ride at uh, Murchison Falls National Park, we will get to see great concentrations of hippos. And the purpose of this boat ride is actually to go downstream to Lake Albert, to the Nile Delta. And on the way, of course, we'll be looking to this large or to large crocodiles. And if we're lucky, we will get to see some um, herons like this one. This is the largest heron on the planet. This is the Goliath heron we're likely to see. But the most important attraction would be to spot the elusive and prehistoric looking like shoebill. So far on every trip we've done in Uganda, we've been fortunate. We either have seen it in the Murchison Falls National Park or in other national parks, but this would be one of the highlights of our trip in Uganda. A famous bird in Africa is the marabou stork. And a place uh, where we will be stopping, of course, will be to have a look at what the local uh, fishing villages look like and to look at the catch of the day. This is a, a typical fish of African rivers and African lakes. This is the tilapia, belonging to a group of fish known as the cichlids. And uh, we'll be looking at those. I like this picture. This is a picture of a hippo and on the top, the spur winged plover. So definitely for this trip, um, of course, sun protection, hats and so on are important, but most important of all would be to take binoculars with you because we have plenty of bird watching opportunities on this trip. The gray crested crane is the national bird of Uganda. It's found on its flag and we hope to spot this one as well. This is a particularly beautiful bird we often get to see in Murchison Falls National Park. Another good view of the Jackson's heart beast. And uh, of course, yes, this is a bird watcher's paradise. So whenever we have a good view of some of the incredibly colorful bee eaters, we will get to stop the car, we will get the cameras out. This is a fantastic one. This, this, this is the carmine bee eater, but you have many different species, not only of bee eaters, raptors like this long crested eagle. Um, and then of course, one of the more dangerous animals in Africa, this is the, the buffalo. And we have a good chance to see large herds in Murchison Fall uh, National Park. The distance from Murchison Falls National Park to the Kibale Forest National Park is just too long to cover in one day. It would be such a long drive. I've done it in the past. It's a, a 10 hour drive. So what we decided to do is that we will um, spend the morning doing a game drive in Murchison Falls National Park. We often have lunch at the lodge and then afterwards, after lunch, we leave, we have a stop at Hoima uh, in a little hotel where we spend the night. And then the next day, uh, our trip will continue to the primate capital of the world known as the Kibale Forest National Park. This is a forest where we can find 13 species of primates and monkeys. 
And um, this is a place, of course, on the way where we'll pass through the, the banana plantations, look at the locals, very friendly, um, really in, enjoying to pose for us. Uh, we always ask, can we take a picture? And this is great. Um, we have a, a person here, and I think we counted 10 banana bunch and bunches on his bicycle. Uh, really incredible to see those people transport their harvest to the nearby markets. Uh, this is also an area with about 40 crater lakes. And uh, here we have often the, the situation where we have a possibility to walk in the afternoon just when schools finish. And here we have some um, members of our group and uh, the local school children uh, found it just so funny to follow us all the way back to the lodge. So this is really part of one of the highlights of our trip is to have this close contact with the population um, uh, of uh, Uganda, which is really, really great. After good night's rest, uh, we have a, about a 45 minute drive from our lodge down um, to, the, to the border of the Kibale Forest National Park. This is a place where we'll register and where we will get uh, an introduction uh, to our first important primate tracking, which is our chimp tracking. Of course, with wildlife, we can never guarantee to spot all the wildlife, but so far we had a 100% successful rate uh, in spotting chimps uh, during our chimp tracking at the Kibale Forest National Park. This is also a great area for bird watching. This is the red chested cuckoo but of course the highlight would be to spot primates to spot monkeys and of course the highlight would be uh, to spot uh, the chimpanzees depending a lot on the situation they could be high up in the canopy sometimes it happens they come down we can never guarantee it we never know how strenuous the walks can be sometimes we're driving for 20 minutes and we walk for five minutes and we find them. Sometimes we don't drive at all. And um, we sometimes have to walk two hours to find them. So we just have to, to play it by ear, hope for the best. And of course, we're always joined by rangers who are in continuous radio contact with the trackers and those people will have tracked uh, the chimpanzees early in the morning so we do have a good chance to spot them and this track can last anywhere from one to three three and a half hours in total time we're in the in, under the cover of the forest so the temperatures are very pleasant in the kibale forest national park after that, we'll be continuing our drive about uh, three and a half hours to Queen Elizabeth National Park. Uh, this is one of the most famous national parks in Uganda. This is a place where we, of course, always have a stop, look at the locals. This is uh, in a crater lake where they do salt extraction. We tend to have a stop there, talk to the locals and see what they're doing, how the salt extraction actually uh, happens. And this is also a place where we'll have good game drives. We have a great uh, boat ride along the famous Kazinga Channel. And this is a place where we have a good opportunity to look at a lot of wildlife, but also a lot of birds, particularly the pied kingfishers. Um, this is a great place to spot uh, the African fish eagle, which is one of the largest birds of prey along the riverbanks uh, in Africa. And this is a good place to spot um, the, the fish eagles. And of course, a good place to spot all kinds of ibis, uh, sacred ibis in this particular spot, in this particular picture. We do have the Hadada ibis, so uh, a great national park as well. And of course, along the boat ride, uh, why not? This is one of my favorite animals in Africa. Uh, has this great expression in his eyes. This is, of course, the hippo. We'll be looking for those. There are many, many along the Kazinga Channel. And in Queen Elizabeth, uh, of course, we will try again, like in Murchison Falls National Park, we have one of the larger land predators of Africa. This is uh, the lion. We'll be trying to spot lions again 
in Queen Elizabeth National Park. So again, uh, everybody works together with the rangers in our vehicles. Uh, the more eyes, the better. Binoculars out and we'll be trying to spot uh, all kinds of wildlife along our game drives in Queen Elizabeth National Park. This is a view, we get pretty close to our lodge where we're staying. This is a view with the sunset over the Kazinga Channel. And this is great. So for whoever would like to do some extra bird watching and so on, we always try to accommodate um, everybody's wishes during our uh, tour in Uganda. And then finally, we'll be heading down uh, further uh, into the mountains. We'll be uh, gaining some altitude. We'll be at an altitude of about 2,200 meters. The Bwindi Impenetrable uh, National Park or the Bwindi Impenetrable Forest. This is the place where we have about half of uh, the mountain gorillas found uh, on the planet. You know that Uganda is not the only country where we find mountain gorillas. Mountain gorillas are found in the Democratic Republic of Congo as well, and in the small southern neighbor of Uganda known as Rwanda. But about half of the thousands uh, gorillas, uh, or the mountain gorillas, are found in Uganda, with about 450 um, individuals are found in the Uganda. So here we have the headquarters, uh, the Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. This is a place where we have uh, an early morning briefing about what is going to happen. Here I recommend everyone, really. This is important because we never know how distant uh, the gorilla families are uh, located. So we've had all kinds of situations. Sometimes we have to drive an hour and a half and then walk 20 minutes. Sometimes we can walk straight from the headquarters, walk two and a half to three hours. So it, it varies. Uh, we would just have to see what a gorilla family we're assigned to. And to diminish the human impact and not to disturb the gorillas, uh, the group size is limited to eight people uh, per group. This is the reason why here in Bwindi we always have to split our group uh, in half. Very important, as we never know how distant the gorilla families are, uh, I will recommend everyone to hire a porter. Uh, this is a way to, uh, you know, involve the local uh, community to make them aware how important it is uh, to protect gorillas and this is a way to involve the local communities to hire a porter they're there to help you when the the slopes are steep they're there to give you a, a helping hand to carry your backpack to carry your water this can be very very important as we don't know how long we'll be away uh, from the headquarters and after, who knows, half an hour drive, sometimes it's an hour drive or more, uh, we'll start to walk, often going through the agriculture zone. This is also a tea growing area. This is a place you can see where we'll be uh, walking through a tea plantation. And afterwards, we will be getting into the Bwindi impenetrable forest. And there the land uh, changes totally. We'll be walking to, uh, through a forest, of course, will be led uh, by um, a, a, a ranger. And uh, those people are in continuous contact with other trackers that have been uh, locating the gorilla family before. So they will advise to our lead ranger where the gorillas are. And uh, then we'll just follow them, of course, having breaks on the way, having the possibility to eat something and this is the reason why we'll order a packed lunch in the lodge uh, for our gorilla track. We will always recommend to take enough water with you. I will recommend two liters, half a gallon of water. This is important uh, as you don't know how far we'll have to walk. And then of course the highlight, yes, will be uh, to, to look at the gorillas. And you know, each situation always has been so different. It could be that the gorillas are found active with the silverback uh, around us. This is a female with her, with her small one. 
Uh, it could be that they're just playing uh, in the in the shrub. Um, it could be uh, that we just look at the silverback uh, having a nap uh, with the little ones playing around him. But there is a good chance uh, to look at them really having a close observation. And when I mean close, um, this could be anywhere from... Um, um, uh, three, four meter distance, and this is one of the most impressive wildlife encounters uh, you can witness. So yes, it is worth every bit of effort to climb up and down and go along slopes. And this is one of the reasons why we recommend to take garden gloves with you, as this is a great way to hold on to vines and so on. But uh, you find all the information basically on the, um, on the information that will be sent by Noble Caledonia to you. And then, yes, the trip is coming to an end. Uh, we'll be leaving Bwindi National Park. We'll be heading down to one of the smaller, but for me, one of the most impressive national parks in Uganda. Small national park, Lake Mburu, is also a place where a couple of years ago, about five years ago, uh, some giraffes were imported from Murchison Falls National Park, and they've been thriving. So there's, uh, they're reproducing. Uh, it's great to see the little ones uh, thriving in Lake Mburu National Park. And this is one of the places where we get to do another bushwalk. Here again, we'll be joined by an armed ranger. And why can we do it there? Because we don't have any lions in this area. And this gives us a great opportunity to have a close look, who knows, with zebras, uh, why not the largest antelope in, uh, in Africa? This is the, the Eland, a massive antelope, a little skittish. So that's why another good reason uh, to bring your binoculars along a trip like this. And yes, we love to, and I particularly like uh, to, 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 to have little surprises here and there. So we have our fantastic driver guides that are with us during those two weeks. And uh, yes, we sometimes, uh, when conditions permit it, set up a little table, put some drinks out, have a gin and tonic, a local beer, why not? Um, this is a great way uh, to end the trip. So I do hope to see you. Uh, in Africa, I do hope to see you uh, with us uh, during our exploration of Uganda and our exploration of Malawi, why not, in the coming months. Thank you very much and hope to see you there. Bye.